got inside here? So we have got a four bedroom, just under 4,000 square foot news house. This is what you expect of a 12 million pound house. In the years leading up to the war, London became a magnet for Russian oligarchs who invested billions of pounds in property, art, and other assets. This video will explore the dark side of luxury London, and it will look at the city's role in facilitating the flow of dirty money. London has long been a haven for dirty money. The city's opaque property market, lax rules on company ownership, and lack of transparency have made it an attractive destination for oligarchs and other corrupt individuals to stash their ill-gotten gains. However, the spotlight has been firmly cast on London's role as a money laundering hub. In recent months following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the UK government has imposed sanctions on President Putin's oligarch elite, and there is growing pressure to crack down on corruption in the city. The scale of the problem is staggering. A recent report by the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project found that London is home to more than 1.5 trillion pounds of dirty money. The report also found that the UK government has been slow to act on the problem. In the past, the government has been reluctant to investigate wealthy individuals for fear of scaring away investments. However, the war in Ukraine has changed the calculus. The UK government is now under pressure to take action to clean up its act. The war in Ukraine has created a political will to act, and the government has announced some strong measures. However, there are also some challenges. The UK's opaque property market and lax rules on company ownership will make it difficult to crack down on dirty money. The government will also need to work with other countries to ensure that dirty money cannot be easily moved around the world. The influx of Russian money has had a significant impact on London. The city's property market has been inflated, and there has been a growing demand for luxury goods and services. The influx of Russian money into the city has driven up demand for property, which has pushed prices up. If you're looking for somewhere safe to stash the proceeds of your nefarious activities, London's a very attractive place to do it. This was said by Duncan John Hames, a former Liberal Democrat politician who currently holds the position of Director of Policy at Transparency International UK. It is true that the invasion of Ukraine by Russia and the subsequent sanctions on President Putin's oligarchs have put a spotlight on London, England as a haven for dirty money. The UK's financial sector is estimated to be worth £2 trillion, making it a major target for money launderers. The extent of Russian influence in the UK has been a matter of concern for many years. The invasion of Ukraine has only served to highlight this issue, and the recent revelations about the Deputy Prime Minister of Russia owning a flat overlooking the Ministry of Defense, which he bought from the Queen, is a particularly symbolic example. Igor Shuvalov, the Deputy Prime Minister of Russia, has been a close ally of President Putin for many years. He is a former finance minister and is seen as one of the most powerful figures in the Russian government. In 2011, he purchased a luxury flat in Whitehall Court, a prestigious building just a short walk from Downing Street. The flat was reportedly bought from the Queen for 11.4 million pounds. The revelations about Shuvalov's flat have also led to questions about the role of the Queen in the sale of the property. The Queen is the head of state of the UK, and she is also the owner of a large portfolio of property. Some see the fact that she sold a property to a Russian government official as a conflict of interest. In the long term, will this affect the UK economy? Let us see what Lady Hodge, the Member of Parliament for Barking, has to say about this. If people can't trust Britain, if we lose our status as trusted jurisdiction, that, in the longer term, is much more damaging to the UK economy. In February 2022, when Russia initiated its military aggression in Ukraine, the United Kingdom swiftly responded by being among the first Western allies to impose sanctions on the country. As of May, these sanctions have targeted more than a thousand individuals and businesses that are believed to be contributing to President Putin's war efforts through the use of illicitly obtained funds. The imposed sanctions extend to various entities, including banks that collectively possess global assets amounting to 500 billion pounds. These financial institutions have been identified as facilitating the flow of funds into President Putin's war chest. Additionally, oligarchs and their families, whose combined net worth reaches 150 billion pounds, have also been subject to these measures. The name Moscow on Thames is a derogatory term used to describe London, England, as a haven for Russian money and influence. The term Moscow on Thames was popularized by the British journalist Owen Matthews, who used it in a 2007 article for The Guardian. Matthews argued that London had become a magnet for Russian money and that this was having a negative impact on the city. He also warned that the Russian government was using London as a base to extend its influence in the West. You must have heard of Londongrad. Londongrad is a nickname for London that encapsulates the British capital's popularity as a haven for wealthy Russians in the post-Soviet era. 
Leningrad's rise to prominence as a Russian money laundering hub can be traced back to the 1990s when the collapse of the Soviet Union led to a wave of privatization and economic reform in Russia. This created a new class of wealthy Russians, many of whom were eager to invest their newfound wealth in Western countries. There are many other similar nicknames too for London. Can you name another? Following the independence of former British colonies, the United Kingdom retained a few territories that were granted a special tax-exempt status to alleviate their economic reliance. However, the Suez Crisis in 1956 and subsequent financial pressures on the pound sterling led to the Bank of England imposing a temporary ban on lending to non-British borrowers. This ban posed a threat to the profitability of commercial banks in London. To find a solution, an informal agreement was reached. Commercial banks were allowed to engage in transactions involving non-British residents as long as they were conducted in a foreign currency. As a result, the remaining territories of the former British Empire experienced unintended growth as offshore financial centers. London played a significant role in facilitating this unregulated industry. These offshore hubs provided a convenient avenue for non-British individuals to discreetly move their money to the UK, utilizing complex structures such as shell companies that exist only in name. The Golden Visa was controversial from the start, with critics arguing that it was open to abuse and that corrupt individuals could use it to launder money. The Golden Visa was a residence by investment program in the United Kingdom that allowed wealthy individuals to obtain residency and an eventual path to citizenship by investing two million pounds or more in the UK Duncan called Golden Visa the time the blind faith period. The fact that more than 12,000 Golden Visas were issued in its lifetime, of which 2,581 were to Russian citizens, including at least eight sanctioned oligarchs, means that the UK government has been criticized for its lax approach to money laundering and corruption. The UK government closed the Tier 1 Investa visa category on February 17, 2022. The then Home Secretary Priti Patel cited concerns that the route had facilitated the presence of persons who had obtained their funds illicitly or who posed a wider security risk. According to OCCPR's Russian Asset Tracker, extensive research combining public records and significant data leaks such as Panama and Pandora Papers had identified $17 billion worth of assets belonging to sanctioned oligarchs. Among these individuals are metals magnate Alisher Osmanov, industrialist Oleg Deripaska, and Roman Abramovich, the owner of Chelsea Football Club. Specifically focusing on Abramovich, approximately $9 billion worth of assets have been identified thus far. How would London be like without its fix of forbidden finance? It is hard to say for sure. However, the city would likely become a less attractive destination for oligarchs and other corrupt individuals. This would mean less money flowing into the city, which could have a negative impact on the economy. However, it is also possible that London could reinvent itself as a more ethical and transparent financial center. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And do not forget to tap that like button. Farewell.